Hey, hey, it's TDA. Welcome back to episode 6 of this Dyson Sphere Let's Play. This is the Buy the Book Let's Play where we use blueprints to do stuff. Um, the lesson we've learned from last episode, or at least that I learned just after it, is that even with blueprints it's easy to make mistakes. Because I was wondering why my research was going so slow. Well, it turns out I actually had, had only belts going into this red science box, but nothing actually going out. The end result thousands of red science being stocked up but not actually being used so fix that now mass producing or at least mass transporting the uh, red science into the science buildings now and as you can see it's going really fast again it's a nice way to see that it's actually not a problem if something goes wrong along the way because you have plenty of time to research all the stuff that you need but yeah just wanted to point out that if you were wondering last episode why the research was going so slow well, I messed up, so there's that. Um, last episode we ended on the other planets, so we found out that in our system we have three planets, which is usually the case. One of them actually doesn't have any silicon, so we went to the other one that has both the silicon as well as some titanium. We set up some production there, and we brought a lot of stuff with us. It's actually still in my inventory, so even though we didn't spend that much time on the other planet, um, yeah, we were able to bring quite a lot of stuff, so that's very nice. Um, it's all the stuff we'll need for now. In this episode, we want to focus on getting our yellow science production going. We need quite a new, few new things for this, and actually what is interesting is that this is usually the part of the game where I get really enthusiastic. We have all this stuff built up, we have all the buildings we want, we can set down thousands of smelters if we want. Um, yeah, but if you do that, you will notice that either one of two things happen. You either spend a lot of time building all the power for that, or you don't build the power and you don't spend all the time, but you are suddenly wondering why you have all these buildings that are barely producing anything. Because of course, building buildings without power is not going to get you very far. This is really one of the parts of the game where I think it makes sense to kind of pace what you're doing, only build what you actually need and actually are going to use and then expand from there. Um, so you can really balance what you need and what you're producing. The way we're going to do that is we are going to focus on some of the buildings that we need and the items that we haven't actually um, put in production at all yet. Um, just looking at the distance over here, there is some oil over here that I would like to be able to access in the future without having to tear everything down. So I think this should work. And I'll demonstrate what I mean, because we are actually going to be producing several different items. Yay, milestone. Um, one of them is graphene, so not graphite, but graphene, which is made from graphite as well as some um, sulfuric acid. Which means we also need sulfuric acid, which is this, which is produced from three items. Um, most of them are quite trivial, so stone and water, but we also need oil. Well. Luckily, we have plenty of oil stop, stocked up by now, so that's over here. Um, we actually have almost the entire storage full already. Um, it stuck, stacks up to 1, 000, uh, sorry, 10,000, so it doesn't uh, fill up that fast. But uh, as you can see, we're getting close to that. And that means we have plenty of oil to use. Um, we, are also, we also need, and I actually didn't set the recipe here, so my bad. We also need to have plastic. Plastic is also made from oil and also made from graphite. So that means we need quite a lot of different items coming in um, to make all of this because we will need the plastic for um, the next item that we want to produce, which is, drum roll please, where did I put it? Uh, over here, the organic crystals. And I put these in a uh, separate part just because um, it makes sense sometimes to start this production first. For example, before you go to the, uh, the other planet, you could start already start this production up. Um, you might not have the organic crystals uh, in production yet. So this, in this, by doing it like this, you can easily split this up and start the production early, if that's what you want to do. Um, I will actually need to fine tune these blueprints a little bit. I actually redid them just before I started this episode and apparently I missed a few spots. So I'll make sure those are updated before I post them. But anyway, what you need for this is, again, the plastic. So that will be coming in from this belt. Um, 
more oil so and more water um, and the nice thing is about that that since we already have oil coming out and over here we can just continue on this belt and that should give us all the oil that we need or we can just pull it in from the other source if we want to and then last but not least the third item that we need for this is over here which is the titanium crystals and the yellow science now those will need the organic crystals which we're making over there um, but what we also need is titanium now the good news is titanium we have plenty of this because we just got that we will also need the um, diamonds in order to create uh, yellow science um, we can't actually start it up yet because we haven't researched yet so that will take a moment in this blueprint the um, um, diamonds are coming from the top I think in this case if I look around I believe we have some coal over here yeah so we have coal over here we actually have more of it over here as well so in our case we probably want to get the graphite um, from below Alternatively, let's see if we have it up here as well. We have the source over here, but that would require us to build it all, all the way around. Which, honestly, we can. It's not the biggest problem in the world. But... Yeah, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Let's just get it from downstairs. Uh, it's a little bit closer, I believe. But yeah, uh, first things first. Uh, let's queue up some more research, because this will be finishing quite quickly now. Now we're actually... <laughs> using our uh, red signs we want to get this um, we need thrusters in order to be able to continue on with the rest thrusters are over here so let's queue this up we will also need this and this and actually let's switch those two up And make sure we get the other ones first. Might not matter depending on how fast we are, but let's do it anyway. And we also need the vertical construction, which we actually already started. With 1%, but still we started. And then back to the other tab. The uh, quick version of all this spamming is just queue up everything that you need. Or that you can research almost, uh, especially if you are handcrafting some stuff yourself. You will probably have plenty of time to do that. But of course you don't have to do that, you can take whichever approach you like. Um, so water. Water we haven't actually done yet before, but it's really simple. You get the water pump. Yes, the name speaks for itself. Um, I always feel like I end up needing more water than I think, so I always overbuild this. Apparently this is not liquid enough to actually pull from that. Ah, this is probably going to be enough. Um, yeah, so let's see. Let's connect that up. can actually make it a little shorter than that. I'll do that like that. Um, the power poles are not included because sometimes this can get really messy um, depending on where you're actually building this. But the nice thing about these chemical plants is that usually you're able to put these um, power poles in between on this little area where it's kind of like a diagonal part of the building. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit messy if you're building in a, a more confined area of your planet. but. Nine times out of ten it should work. But I left them out of the blueprint for that reason. At least for most part. So, water coming in. That's one. We also need... Oil. Um, I'm actually, I actually want to tap in both. So, let's do it like that. Might as well need, keep it nice and clean. And we don't strictly need to do this, but I'm going to connect this up anyway. Just so I know for sure that there is actually oil coming in, uh, going out actually both of these um, 
uh, storage tanks. That way we can avoid them completely filling up. And that should take care of that. Uh, we have to also need some more water over here. Uh, which I forgot for a moment. But we can put in a sorter to fix that. So let's do that like this. As always, make sure when you do the splitter, you put in the notes. And I probably did it too late already now. Yep. So there's some oil over here. Let's remove that. It's not a big deal. We can burn that, you know. Um, um, building the water, of course. So let's put down a few more. We don't need that much water over here, so... This should probably be enough. And if it's not, we can always go back and check. I'm a little too lazy to go sort it out right now. But again, water is so easy to make. I usually just make sure I have enough without really counting how many water pumps I actually need. Okay. As you can see in this particular area, it's getting a little bit cramped. Um, we still need to put in the graphene over here. But since we're bringing that from below, that's not going to be a problem. Um, yeah, so let's see. We also need stone, graphene, and that's about it, I believe. So, let's see. Where was our coal? Our coal is over here. If you remember, we already had a graphite little production center. Nothing special, just uh, a few belts worth. We might just place that over here so we get that a little bit localized. Um, actually, let's let's take a little bit more room because we need um, the graphite for two reasons. We need the graphite to actually put in the graphite belts over here. But you also need the graphite to make um, diamonds. So since we need to do both, we might as well split those up. Um, just wondering what makes most sense. Again, it probably doesn't really matter, but yeah, let's do it like that. So it should be going out that direction, right? Yeah. That's one. And that's two. All right. That means we need two belts. That should take care of one. And there you go. That should take the other one, take care of the other one. That's one. And we put the other one over there. Let's try to keep it a little neat. And do it like that. Connect that up. And make sure it's powered up. Also need to make sure this is connected to the power. And there we go. I think I left my wireless power towers over here where we started. Again, I only built three throughout the entire game, unless I drop them somewhere, forget about them, and then find out at some later point in the game, oh, where are my power towers? Um, yeah, so those should be crafting, and that should take care of itself. We also need to put up some stone. This is actually just raw production. We don't actually need to convert the stone into anything. It's just raw stone going in. One of the few buildings that actually uses raw stone. The sulfuric acid that is. Yeah, level two belts and level three sorters. Now you might be wondering why am I still using the level one stuff? And the reason for that is actually quite simple. You don't actually need the higher level stuff until a little bit later in the game. The um, sorters are easy to make. The belts are a bit more annoying. Uh, the items, especially the items that you need for the belts, are not hard to make. It's just items that you also need for a lot of other stuff. So making the belts at that point where you don't actually need those belts for anything 
is not something I recommend. I usually wait until uh, we, un we unlock the logistics centers, then we're really scaling up the production. And then it makes also sh uh, sense to make sure you have the best belts and sorters in the game. And I usually go straight for the Mark III sorters as well as the Mark III belts. Uh, straight from the level 1 blueprints. Um, the other reason is the blueprints that I'm using the Mark 1s. Uh, I know for sure that you can make the Mark 1 belts. And if I get blueprints where I'm using some inter intermediate stuff then might be annoying if that's not actually items that you have mass production yet. Again, this is one of the things you need to watch out for if you're crafting while using the wireless power towers because they have massive range. It's really easy to get into a situation where you're using those, think everything is powered up, and then you walk away and it turns out it isn't. Just waiting for those last few belts to be put in. There you go. Alright, so we have that coming in, we have that coming in now. We are now starting up the production of our graphene over here as well. And then of course we need one more item. So the diamonds. Now diamonds are actually interesting because diamonds is something that's really easy to produce and you don't really need much of it at all. Um, Let's put those like this, I think. Yeah, should be fine. Turbines, also known as the bane of your existence. We're gonna need a lot of those blue motors. Um, and again, you'll find out soon enough how and why, but yeah, there you go. This is overkill, by the way. You really do not need this much um, graphene to produce diamonds. Diamonds, again, really easy to make. I just do it anyway, um, because I like having a little bit of a stockpile of, of graphene in multiple places in my base. Again, you don't really need it, but you might as well while you're at it. Alright, so we need to do two things. We need to make sure this... Why is it not actually producing? Oh, this belt is still finishing. Okay. Um, we need to make sure the graphite is being pulled in. You could actually, by the way, get away with um, using this graphite like this. We could actually do that. Just to show it's possible. Because um, this is going to be plenty of graphite for the entire thing. What's the problem here? Ah, okay. Here we go. Just going over. go this is turning into a nice little spaghetti over here again that has to do with all the inputs different inputs i'm trying to combine here you can make this a lot more clean if you either have the, the items on the proper side of your uh, of your buildings which i happen to have not and uh, again i made these build blueprints I, I think they make sense but i made them in a scenario where some of the items were on the other side of the building flipping them around is something you can do if you really want them to look neat um, the chemical plants are very nice in that regard that they have a lot of entry points on each side. Uh, actually more than I think almost every building in the game. Um, I just go with the blueprint, not overcomplicated. Again, these are things that you will be tearing down not too long from now. And I know I've been saying that for the past three hours, uh, but it is actually true. Um, so again, overcomplicating that doesn't make sense in my opinion okay now what we can actually do um, like I said the diamonds are coming in from the top in this blueprint but they don't necessarily need to come in from the top you can just bring them in from the bottom as well so let's just do that which means I should probably have flipped this diamond production around because now I need to bring it all the way around. Not the biggest deal, but yeah. Turning into a nice little zigzag over here. But it doesn't bother me. I hope it doesn't bother you either. But if you want to, again, make it nice, look nice and clean, then by all means go for it. Let's put 
those in. Let's put this to yellow science production. And then we should have stuff coming in pretty soon. Let's make sure we have enough fuel going. Let's see, I think this belt is still... Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Should be ramping up pretty quick now. There we go. Let's put our power towers over there. So as you can see with that, don't actually need this production over here. And there's plenty of graphite being produced over there. And that is not actually going into the, uh, the diamond production. The diamond production, by the way, is here only stacking up. The moment I built this initial brew plant, uh, the yellow science wasn't done yet. So depending on the order you pick again, you can do this a lot earlier if you want. So it's set to that by default. I just make sure that you don't forget to make sure it has an outgoing as well when you do that. Now what you can actually do, uh, because this won't, be, this won't produce a full belt, this, like you can see it's only producing one per two seconds. So that means that these six smelters combined only produce half a belt worth of um, output. That means that if you go like this, I can't actually fit anything in between here. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Well, it looks like I could. Let's just go around then. Uh, by doing this, you actually have a full belt outgoing. So you make sure you don't have unnecessary delays because you put something on this belt that needs more graphite. Um, there we go. So let's see if this is all working like it should now. So we have some acid going in. There's more acid than this uh, graphene production actually needs, but it's uh, so we have some stacking up. Again, that has a purpose because we will need that for one of the other um, items later that we do need. Um, we have plastic. Plastic is being produced quite straightforward. And the plastic feeds into this organic crystal building, making the crystals. One of the most annoying items in the game, if you ask me, but it's working. Is it going fast? No, it's not, but it's going fast enough. It's also feeding into this building, making the titanium crystals, and that is now making yellow science. Now, that only means that we need to bring the yellow science to our actually science production facility. Uh, let's do that like that. Bring that around. Bring it up here and down here. This power tower is actually in the way. Let's break it down, put it back up. And again, this is one of those things you, you really don't want to use a blueprint for because you will find out that half of the time it's in the wrong place or lining up wrong with other buildings that you want to place. Um, so just Doing little things like this manually it doesn't take a lot of time, and that way you don't waste your time on fiddling around the blueprints. Well, it probably goes a lot faster if you just do it yourself. And let's see. We're uh, blowing through our little research over here. And there we go. Again, this is not going to be a fast production. But it's going to be a slow and steady production. You can actually easily scale this up just by replicating this building again. But for the moment we don't need to because we only need a few science items that actually need yellow science to really get us started. Um, that's this one. We need the high strength titanium alloy. So let's put that up. Again, only needs 80. So if you compare that to all the other science, you only need a tiny amount of uh, yellow signs to get yourself started 
Um, what we also need is the interstellar just logistics system that needs the reinforced thruster, which we can research. That actually needs 1600, that one. And then after that, we can make this. Now, the things I just queued up, just to go through that uh, a little bit more slow, this makes you be able to be create the planetary logistics station. That means that you basically have like a, a hub where little shuttles go in and out. Well, they're actually called drones. Uh, little drones go in and out carrying 25 resources. Initially, you can scale it up with additional research. Um, and you can have them fly all around your planet. So from one side to the planet to the other side. Uh, it takes a lot of energy and uh, power to do so. But it's really convenient to have this. And it gets even more convenient when you combine it with the interstellar logistics system, which is basically the larger version of the other building. But this one has vessels, logistic vessels, and those go between planets. So instead of us flying back and forth between planets, this building will do it for us. Um, and again, you only need 80 plus 120, so 200 yellow signs. So even if you're producing it at a very slow rate, let's say, Five per minute it'll only take you a small amount of time um, to make this well five per minute is maybe a really slow rate but I get you yeah I hope you get what I mean the research takes a while and in order to actually be able to use these buildings we need to create a lot more stuff because what this needs is processors which we have we're already producing this on the other planet we brought some with us but as you can see you need a lot of processors so it's a good thing that we started up the production on the other planet and it has been ongoing while we're off talking here. We need to craft these logistic drones. Um, not the most complicated recipe when we need the thrusters and those are quite straightforward to make, but we haven't made them yet. So we need to make sure we have them. We need for the interstellar version, we need the titanium as well as what I call the magic sticks. Now the titanium over here is quite straightforward. We need titanium, we need steel and we need acid and we turn that into the uh, titanium alloy. Now, we have all of that already. We have steel, we have acid now, production going on. Um, again, not the most complicated recipe, but we haven't made it yet. The magic sticks, I'm actually gonna have to look up what they are actually called. So the particle containers, sorry. Those need the graphene that we are actually producing now. So again, stacking up as we speak. Um, but we also need those turbines that I was just talking about and the turbines, not hard to make, but it's quite a convoluted process to make them. You need to make engines first, and you need to upgrade those engines. You need to take those into turbines. And we actually need, as you can see, quite a lot of turbines. It takes two turbines for every particle container. And if you go one step back, for every turbine, you need two engines. So it's basically four engines that we need to craft for every particle container. So. Yeah, we're gonna have fun with that. We will do that in the next session, however, because for now, our goal was to get the yellow signs going. As you can see, that's exactly what we did. Slow and steady. You can scale it up further if you want. One tip that I haven't mentioned yet, and I don't think I still have to because I probably threw them away somewhere along the line. If you're gathering trees in the early game, let's see if I can pop some. And you get the logs, you get plant fuel. But every now and then you will get um, organic crystals. It's not a lot of crystals that you usually get. Uh, as you can see, I'm now trying to get it to uh, give me some crystals while I'm talking. But of course now it doesn't work. Um, you don't get a lot of organic crystals while you do this. But especially in the early game, you probably are taking down quite a few trees. Uh, it's not uncommon that you get like something like 50 to 100 organic crystals. That's almost half of what you need to make that 200 yellow signs that I was talking about. So if you save them for a moment, you put them into a stockpile somewhere. Um, yeah, you can kind of quick start your research, your yellow research by doing so. I can't believe how unlucky I am when it comes to this organic crystals. Now it's really starting to bug me. Can I get some organic crystals, please? I don't need them. I'm just trying to make an example here. Come on, come on, we can do it. I 
think there's someone in the back of the game just shout, trying to mess with me or something. Eh, anyway, screw that. I hope you get the point. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one where we will start working on our production. And before we do, this is really annoying me. Need to take away these sorters. Um, what we are going to do is work towards those turbine productions. We're going to work towards particle containers. So we're all set up to go and set up our interstellar logistics centers somewhere in the next few episodes. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are still watching this content. You're on episode 6 by now, so I think it deserves a like if you watch the other episodes as well. I hope it's useful. If you have any comments, suggestions, feedback whatsoever, please leave a comment. I'm very happy to take into consideration anything you want to see. Maybe a specific guys you're uh, interested in. Let me know and see you in the next one.